Okay, let's talk about algebra equations. So you can see here I have an equation, and here is an answer. And I want to know if this answer is correct. Okay, so this video is all about how to check your answers, and we're uh, talking about specifically equations in algebra. So anytime you have a solution or what you think may be the right answer, you can always check that when we're dealing with equations in algebra. So um, hopefully a lot of you out there already know how to do this. Matter of fact, how would you do this, or how does one go about checking their uh, answer to see if it was correct or not? If you know um, how to do this, go ahead and put your, you know, qu very quickly into the comment section what you need to do. But I really want to emphasize um, this in terms of a broader, um, you know, skill that you want to have and employ not only just to check to see if you have a right answer you know, on a test or quiz, but this comes into play, especially with multiple choice questions. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later on. So this is a very, very important video. It's not like, okay, here's my answer and hopefully it's right, I'm gonna turn this in. If you have the time, you always want to uh, check to see if you, in fact, you know, you did this correctly. You did and solved an equation correctly. And we are talking specifically about equations in algebra. So I'm going to get into all of this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabla Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But uh, if you've been having a tough time in mathematics, maybe you've been having a tough time for a long time in math, maybe you just don't feel like you're getting enough math instruction or you're not connecting with your uh, teacher's teaching style, whatever the case might be, I've been teaching math for decades and I really come at math in a very clear and understandable bite-sized little pieces so any student, every student can be successful in math. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, I could help you succeed with your respective math course. Now, if you're preparing for any test that has a math section on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplacer, CLEP exam, teacher certification exam, you get the idea. I could help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, I have a fantastic uh, homeschool math courses and curriculums, something you definitely want to check out. And if you don't have any math notes, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. But if you want excellent grades in math, you must take great math notes. All right, let's get into this. So let's use this first uh, problem here as an example. And this is not um, mysterious or complicated uh, in terms of what we need to do to check if we have a the correct solution uh, in an equation. Okay. So here's what we're going to do, and then I'm going to kind of explain why we're doing it. All right, so let's say we think y equals 1 is the solution to this particular equation. Now, this equation here is, in fact, a quadratic equation. There's actually two solutions, but let's say we were checking one of the solutions. So what do we need to do? Well, here is the main idea, okay? You take what you think is a solution, okay, and you're going to plug it back in to the original equation. So in this case, I'm thinking y equals 1. Uh, is the solution. So I'm going to plug in. I'm going to replace these y's with 1. Okay. Now, why are we going to do that? Well, you can see here I'm plugging in where y is it, uh, uh, the, this variable y with 1. Now I'm going to simplify. Okay. So what you're looking at is this. If you have, in fact, the correct uh, solution, when you simplify your um, answer, do all this math, okay, you do all, you simplify it down down to one number, you should end up uh, with the left-hand side of this equation, whatever number, uh, being equal to the same number on the right-hand side. So on the right-hand side, I have 2. Okay, So I plugged in 1 right here. So let's see what we get. All right, so I get 1 squared. Remember, i got to do powers first. That's 1 uh, squared is 1. 1 times 4 is 4. So 4 minus 1 is 3. Now I'm looking at this. I'm like, OK, well, uh, I have one number over here on the left and one number over here on the right, and they do not equal one another, okay? Well, uh, they do not equal one another because this is not the solution, okay? So, uh, so y equals one is not a solution because three is not equal to two. That's basically the whole procedure here, okay? So uh, if you understand this, or you're like, okay, I could, I could do this. Well, this is very, very important, but here is where a lot of students um, kind of mess up, they don't know how, they don't know the math, the simple arithmetic 
to um, uh, actually check the work. So here is a problem. So here's an equation. I'd like you to go ahead and tell me, is y equals 5 the correct solution to this equation? Okay, so based upon what I just told you, go ahead and pause the video, and you could just tell me with a very simple yes or no uh, that, in fact, y or, or x equals 5 uh, is the solution. Okay, so do you think x equals 5 is the solution, not y equals 5? x equals 5 is the solution to this equation. So I just showed you how to do that. Again, you're going to plug in for these x's right here. Okay, you're going to plug in 5 and you're going to simplify and you're going to evaluate is the left hand side equal to the right hand side. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the results of doing this. Now, if you're not ready to see this, you want to work on this, go ahead and pause the video, but I'm going to show you the actual uh, answer here. All right, so let's plug in 5 for x and see what happens. So the answer is yes, in fact, it is the solution, but let's go ahead and go through it. So we have 2 times 5 minus 1, okay? So 2 times 5 is going to be 10. Remember, i got to do uh, everything inside the parentheses, and i got to do multiplication before subtraction. So what I'm getting at here is that a lot of students get, uh, when, they're, when they check their work, all right, they uh, struggle with the order of operations. They struggle with arithmetic. So even though the concept of plugging numbers back into uh, the replacing the variables with the actual uh, proposed solution or what you think may be the solution it's the math that you have to do right to simplify this so you know again if you're struggling with um, any of this basic math you need to go back and review things like uh, the order of operations working with different type of numbers like fractions etc all right so we have 2 times 10 or so 2 times 5 is 10 so we have 10 minus 1 let's work over here on the left hand side for a second is going to be 9 so I have 2 thirds times 9 all right, so here I had to uh, plug in a 5. Let's just make sure we we can see the uh, original setup here. I have to plug in a 5 there, and I have to plug in a 5 there. So this is going to be 5 plus 1, which, of course, is going to be 6 on the right-hand side. So that's what I'm going to be checking. And hopefully, the left-hand side is going to be equal to the right-hand side. So I have 2 th uh, thirds times 9. So 3 goes into 9 3 times, 3 times 2 is 6, or 9 times 2 is 18 divided by 3 is 6. Either way, the left-hand side, 2 thirds times 9 is 6, and of course that's going to be equal to 6. So therefore, because the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, that number that we plugged in, okay, replace that variable with x, uh, x equals 5 is in fact a good solution, okay? So now, uh, most of you out there, okay, let's suppose that this, and I'm going to speak to you here about a multiple choice uh, uh, problem. So let's say I have AX is equal to 5 and BX is equal to 1 and CX is equal to 0. Let's say here's my question. This is the same question. We already know the answer as, as X is equal to 5. But let's say this was a multiple choice question. And let's say you didn't know how to do this problem okay you're like hmm, I don't know how to do this problem just uh, uh, out of curiosity for some of you I might be uh, wondering well how do I actually solve this problem well here I have three of this fraction I can just multiply this entire equation by three clear the fraction I get uh, the following work right here you can kind of see what I'm doing so three times two-thirds the threes cost cancel I assume with two times two x minus one and then this three I have to multiply by this x and this one so I get three x plus three now, if you don't understand what I'm doing, you want to uh, review how to work with uh, multi-step equations. I have tons of videos in my pre-algebra and algebra playlist on my YouTube channel. But here's the work. So I have 2 times 2x minus 1. That's going to be 4x minus 2. And then I have 3x plus 3 on this side. I move this 3x over here. I get x. I move this 2 over here. I get 5. So x is equal to 5. So you can review this work if you want. But the whole uh, topic of this video is how to check your solutions, okay? Now, obviously, you know, you have a choice to make when you're facing a problem like this. You can be like, all right, here is the question. My objective is to select the right answer. Now, how can I do this? Well, one, I can solve the equation, get uh, what I think is the right answer, x is equal to 5, and then go identify it with my choices, okay? Now, that would be, you know, that's a, a good approach, right? You're saying, well, well, you're a math teacher. Don't you think I should actually solve this equation? 
Well, yes, okay, uh, you certainly want to know how to solve the equation, but when you are facing multiple choice questions, a very good technique is to quickly look at these answers and you can quickly uh, start eliminating. Like I could plug in zero here and I'm like, okay, I can just tell zero is not going to be an answer because I'll have two thirds, two times zero is, is zero. So I have two thirds, this will be left with two thirds times a negative one. So there's no way that's going to be, uh, this is a negative two thirds uh, is going to be equal to one because this, this is going to be a zero here. Hopefully you understand what I'm saying. So I could quickly eliminate that as the answer. Okay, so that leaves me with these two. But let's say you did, you weren't quite confident on how to solve this equation. You're like, oh, I'm not quite sure what to do. Well, what you can do and what you always want to do when it comes to multiple choice uh, exams is to use the answers, plug them in, and see which one works out. Okay, so it's critical that you know how to check your solutions when it comes to equations, all right? Because there's uh, oftentimes on a lot of tests that you can uh, be faced, when you have a multiple choice test, okay, that is an awesome opportunity for you to, to get a lot of questions right that you may not even know how to answer the question, right? You can always use your solutions. And when you see an equation, okay, and you have uh, the choices of, of uh, the solutions here, okay, the, of course you could have right here, down here, D, none of the above, none. Well, all right, well, that's another kind of uh, deal. There you're like, well, I'm not sure which one to pick, but there, oftentimes you're gonna be given tests that you you just have to know how to check your work. Okay, you don't even know how to, have, how to solve the equation. So, you know, this is a very, very important concept when I'm talking about how to check your work, how to check your solutions when it comes to equations. Very, very important for those of you out there that are test takers, and that would be 100% of you if you are in a math class or you're preparing for a standardized test of some sort. So know how to check your solutions. The only way you're going to get better at this is to practice, okay? And, uh, another, and I'll just leave you with another, one other um, uh, tip as well. Here's some of the uh, worst things that you can do as a uh, math student, okay? And this happens uh, typically with students that are very good in math as well, with like B and A students. They'll take their test and they'll turn their test in to the teacher and they're all happy. They're like, look at me, class. I am like so smart because I finished this one hour test in 30 minutes. So they go back to their desk and they start working on something else, their homework or whatnot. They're like, I'm done. I don't have to do anything with it. That's the worst thing you could do. Okay, you turn in your, your test 30 minutes and you have 30 minutes more available to you. Okay, what you should be doing with that 30 minutes is going back and reviewing, grading your test. Okay, looking for mistakes. I can tell you right now, there's a good 90% probability that you made an error someplace. And if there's equations, and, and uh, things on your math test okay, that you were having to solve, you can go back and check a lot of your work. You can grade your own work and catch your mistakes. So you never, never want to turn in your math test early or any test early. You want to be grading your own work. And so the only way you're going to get good at that is to practice, uh, you know, when you're solving equations is to check your work. And sometimes it's kind of voluntary. Sometimes your student won't, uh, your teacher will not require that from you. So try to do some of this. You know, you know, it's going to be difficult to do this on every single problem, but at least do um, uh, do this from time to time, okay? So you don't forget how to check your own answers, especially when it comes to solving equations. And you can also do this with other things like inequalities as well. But let's just keep it with equations for this video. But uh, if this was a helpful video, so some small way, you're like, you know what? That's a good point, Mr. Math teacher. I think you, um, you know, giving me some ideas on what I can do to help uh, improve my situation in math uh, in your math class. If you follow what I'm telling you right now, you're definitely it's definitely going to help you out. Okay, may not help you out tomorrow, but sometime when you go take a test, you'll be like, "Bam! I'm glad I remember what that guy told me." So if that is the case, go ahead and consider smashing that like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, arithmetic to calculus, everything in between. So please take advantage of my content. I post these videos to help you out. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Uh, thank you for your time and have a great day.